Have you ever noticed how some movies have a sweeping wide look while others feel tight and sharp? It's all to do with the charisma of the lens. One type of lens can stretch images for a grand cinematic effect, while another keeps everything crisp and clear. Want to know how these choices can completely change the way a story is seen? Let's explore how selecting the right lens can dramatically influence the visual impact of your film. Let's start with the basics. Spherical lenses are like the classic tools filmmakers use to capture images, and they've been around since the early days of movies. These lenses project images onto a camera sensor in a simple, straightforward way. They keep the image size and shape consistent without squeezing or stretching it. There are two main types of spherical lenses, prime lenses and zoom lenses. Prime lenses have a fixed focal length, which means they can only capture images from one distance. For example, a 50mm prime lens always gives you the same view, making it ideal for shots where you want a consistent look. Whereas the zoom lenses are more flexible because they let you adjust the focal length. For instance, a zoom lens that ranges from 24 to 70 millimeters can zoom in or out, letting you capture a wide variety of perspectives without changing lenses. That's why spherical lenses are popular because they're versatile and easy to use whether you need a specific shot or want to quickly change how you capture the scene. These lenses are special because they capture very wide images. They do this by squeezing the image from side to side. So when you shoot a video or take a photo with an anamorphic lens, the image looks narrower than usual. Later on during editing or projection, this squeezed image gets stretched back out to its original wide shape. This stretching gives the final image a unique cinematic look you'll notice some cool effects such as you'll see oval-shaped out-of-focus lights known as bokeh and distinctive horizontal lens flares. These features add a cinematic and dramatic look to the image, which many filmmakers find appealing. Both lens types have their place in filmmaking. The choice between them often comes down to the specific look a director or cinematographer wants to achieve. As we go on, you'll see how these lenses can shape the visual style of a film in really interesting ways. When it comes to the visual characteristics of your film, the choice between anamorphic and spherical lenses can have a big impact. First up, the aspect ratio. Aspect ratio refers to the shape of the image you see on screen. Anamorphic lenses give you a super wide aspect ratio, like 2.35 to 1 or 2.4 to 1. This creates that classic widescreen look often seen in big movies that fill up the entire cinema screen. It's great for capturing dramatic, expansive scenes. Spherical lenses, in contrast, produce a less wide aspect ratio, usually around 1.85 to 1 or 16 to 9. This is closer to what you see on most TVs and screens. It's more traditional and common for TV shows and standard films. Now let's talk about depth of field. This is how much of the image is in focus. Anamorphic lenses often create a shallower depth of field. What does this mean for you? Well, you'll see more of that creamy out of focus background that makes subjects really pop. It's part of what gives some films that cinematic look you might've heard about. Spherical lenses offer more control here. You can get that shallow depth of field if you want, but it's easier to keep more in focus too. Here's something cool. Distortion and Lens Flares Anamorphic lenses are known for their unique horizontal lens flares. You've probably seen these in sci-fi movies. The horizontal streaks created by anamorphic lenses add a dramatic effect to visuals, mainly because they alter the usual way we see light and scenes in films. The streaks can emphasize the intensity or emotion of a scene. For instance, in a dramatic moment, the streaks can make the environment feel more charged or tense or mysterious. These streaks aren't commonly seen in everyday life as our eyes don't see light this way. So when these appear in movies, they give a unique visual style that can make the scene stand out or feel more artistic. A classic example of anamorphic lens flares enhancing the drama in films can be seen in many of J.J. Abrams' movies, such as in the Star Trek reboot series released in 2009. In several scenes of Star Trek, anamorphic lens flares are used extensively. For instance, during a critical battle scene in space, 
The camera captures the chaos and intensity of the battle, with bright horizontal streaks of light that cross the screen as ships fire at each other and explosions occur. When this image is projected or displayed, it is stretched back to its original wide aspect, making everything look normal in the center, but slightly stretched on the edges. The slight distortion and stretching at the edges of the frame, especially noticeable in wide shots of the city or during the dance sequences, added to the film's dreamlike vintage feel. This visual style supported the movie's homage to old Hollywood musicals, blending a contemporary story with a classic cinematic look. Spherical lenses? They're a bit more straightforward. Less distortion. And when you do get flares, they're typically more circular and subdued. Beyond their visual differences, anamorphic and spherical lenses also come with practical considerations that can affect your production. Anamorphic lenses are generally more expensive due to their complex design and construction. They are costly to purchase or rent, and this higher price reflects the advanced technology and craftsmanship involved. Additionally, anamorphic lenses usually have slower T-stops ranging from T2.8 to T4, which means they let in less light compared to spherical lenses. This lower light transmission requires more powerful lighting setups on set, which can increase your production costs. In contrast, spherical lenses often have faster T-stops such as T1.3 or T2, allowing for better performance in low light conditions. This can reduce the need for extensive lighting and help keep your budget in check. Also, because anamorphic lenses reveal more of the set due to their wide field of view, you may need to invest more in production design to maintain the desired look. Let's break down the good and not so good points of spherical and anamorphic lenses. This will help you make an informed choice for your next project. Spherical lenses have several advantages. They're generally more affordable, which is great if you're working with a tight budget. You'll get sharper images, especially from edge to edge, they're lighter and easier to handle on set, which can be a big plus during long shooting days. Almost any camera can use them, so you don't need to worry about compatibility. You'll also find a wider range of options to choose from. However, spherical lenses have some drawbacks. They can't give you that ultra-wide cinematic look without cropping. The bokeh and flares are less distinctive, which might not suit certain artistic visions. Some directors feel they don't deliver that big movie feel thereafter but anamorphic lenses come with challenges too. They're more expensive, sometimes significantly so. They're usually bigger and heavier, which can be tough for handheld shots. Focusing can be trickier, especially for beginners. You might need special equipment or post-processing to work with the footage. They're also generally not as sharp as spherical lenses. Remember, what's a disadvantage for one project might be exactly what you need for another. It all depends on your specific needs and vision. To see these differences in action, consider examining specific films and their lens choices. For instance, the Tree of Life used spherical Arian Zeiss Master Primes to achieve a sharp, immersive image that enhances the film's naturalistic approach. This choice allows for clear, vivid visuals that draw the audience into the world of the film. In contrast, Moonlight employed Hawk V-Light anamorphics to create a dreamy, nostalgic feel that complements its emotional and personal story. The oval bokeh and wide aspect ratio provided by the anamorphic lenses contribute to the film's unique aesthetic. Similarly, There Will Be Blood utilized Panavision anamorphic lenses to achieve a grand, expansive look that supports the film's epic scope and intense themes. So, which is better? anamorphic or spherical lenses. While the truth is, there's no clear winner. It all comes down to what you need for your specific project. Both types of lenses have their strengths and weaknesses, and both can create stunning images in the right hands. Remember, the most important thing is how these tools serve your story. Don't get caught up in using anamorphic just because it's cinematic, or sticking to spherical because it's more common. Think about your project's needs, your budget, and the look you're going for. As you move forward with your projects, we encourage you to experiment. Try both types of lenses if you can. See how they affect your images, your storytelling. You might be surprised at what works best for you. Do let us know what you think about these cameras. As for everything else, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and hit the bell icon if you want more content like this on your feed.